Welcome to my channel. I am going to walk you through the process of valuing three aerospace and defense stocks and analyzing their financial ratios. Comment if you have questions. I respond to every comment. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. Become a member of the channel and I can do a more in-depth valuation of the ticker of your choice. See the link in the description. The first company we're going to look at is L3 Harris. It sells wireless equipment, night vision products, avionics, surveillance devices, and much more to the government and the commercial sector. Let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of $40 billion, so they're a large cap company. They're trading at one eighty-five dollars a share. And to get the shares outstanding, that's market cap divided by stock price gives you shares outstanding, $216 million. We're going to need this number later when we calculate the value of the company. Let's look at their financials. Free cash flow is how you value a company. You estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount that back to today's dollars. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. And each year they have positive free cash flow and it's growing quite a bit, so that's a really good sign. Net income is a profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And they also have positive net income each year and it's growing, so all good signs so far. And their revenue looks really good. It more than doubles from 2016 to 2019, so amazing growth. Let's look at a capital structure. They have $7 billion of debt. They pay 3.1% interest on their debt, and the cost of debt is 2.8%. To figure out cost of debt, that's the interest rate times 1 minus the effective tax rate. 23% of that capital structure is debt, which means they have 77% equity. Cost of equity is 8.1%. We figure that out using the beta. That's how volatile the stock is relative to the market. So the higher the beta, the higher the cost of equity. And they have a low beta, 0.75, so the stock moves less than the market. The market as a whole has a beta of 1. And we use the capital asset pricing model to get the cost of equity. And their WAC is 6.8%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity. And that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for, that's $51.5 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $45 billion. We divide that by 216 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 209. They're trading at 185, so they're trading at 11% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values them at. They're much higher at 282 a share, so they're saying the stock is 34% undervalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So it looks like the price kept increasing year after year until coronavirus hit, then it came down. It looks like it was trading well over $200, so it looks like it has lots of room to grow because it's still not even close to its pre-corona levels. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE of 30, the median in the market is 18, the average is 52. PE is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. I like to see below 15, there are 30, so investors are paying $30 for $1 of earnings. They have a decent price to sales ratio of 3.1. The median is 1.8, the average is 5.1. Price to sales is stock price over sales per share. To calculate sales per share, that's revenue over shares outstanding. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 3.1. So investors are paying $3.10 for $1 revenue. Price to book is really good, 1.8. The median is 2.6. The average in the market is 7.3. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. To calculate book value per share, that's equity over shares outstanding. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 1.8. So investors are paying $1.80 for $1 book value. Remember, equity is total assets minus total liabilities on the balance sheet. They have a good interest coverage ratio. The median is 4.8. The average is 15.0. Interest coverage ratio is EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0. They're at 5.4, so they can easily cover their interest payments. EBIT is operating income on the income statement. 
ROE is pretty weak at 6%. The median is 15%. The average is 28%. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20%. They're only at 6%. So they don't provide a good value to the equity holders. Current ratio is really good. The median in the market is 1.3. The average is 1.8. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. They're at 1.8, so they can cover their current liabilities. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. Here's L3 Harris in the middle. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in PE, price of sales, price to book, current ratio is fine, ROE they're much worse than the average at 6%, average is 36%, but they are much lower in debt at 23% debt compared to 55% average, they're a little better market cap at 40 billion, average is 34 billion, they pay a higher than average dividend yield at 1.83%, the average is 1.05%. To summarize, I have them trading at 11% discount, their ratios are about average, but their financials look really good. The second company we're gonna look at is Lockheed Martin. This is one of the largest companies in the aerospace and military support industry. It is the world's largest defense contractor based on revenue. It operates four business segments, aeronautics, missiles control, rotary systems, and space. Let's get started with the model. This is a huge company, 110 billion market cap. They're trading at $3.95 a share, and the shares outstanding at $280 million. And let's look at their financials. Look at the free cash flow, $4 billion, $5 billion. They had a little dip in 2018, but it's still about $2 billion. This is what you want to see when you invest in the company, lots of free cash flow. Because if you constantly invest in companies with negative free cash flow, don't be surprised if they go bankrupt. Really strong net income, five to six billion dollars. It did drop in 2017, but still two billion is a big number. Revenue is also solid and growing, 47 billion up to 59 billion. And their margins are pretty consistent. It had a small margin in 2017, but I think that was a big tax hit they took. Let's look at the capital structure, $12.7 billion of debt. They pay 5.2% interest on their debt. And cost of debt is 4.4%. They do have a lot of debt in their capital structure, the 80% debt, which means they have 20% equity. Cost of equity is 9.5%, but their beta is pretty low at 0.93, so the stock moves less than the market. Their WAC is about 5.5%, which is a blend of the cost of debt and cost of equity, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's almost 86 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company, $95 billion. We divide that by 280 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of 341. They're trading at 395, so they're trading at a 16% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street has them valued at 521, so they're saying the stock is way undervalued. They're expecting big growth with this company in the future. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. So the price was driven up well over $400 right at coronavirus. Then it did drop. It's come up a little bit, but it looks like it does have room to grow if it does get back to where it was pre-coronavirus. Let's look at the financial ratios. PE is stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 17.7. Price of sales is stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 1.8, so that's a good ratio. Price to book is stock price over book value per share. I like to see below 3.5, they're at 35.3. So they don't have a good price to book ratio. Interest coverage ratio is really good. That's EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 12.8. ROE is net income over equity. I like to see above 20% and they're at 199%. That's a pretty amazing ratio. Current ratio is current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. They're at 1.2, so they're doing well there. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. I've done videos on Boeing, BWX Technologies, CAE, Airbus, Firon Technology, General Dynamics, Huntington Ingalls, L3 Harris, 
Ruger, Raytheon, Spirit Aerosystems, and Transdime. And Lockheed Martin is here in the middle. And if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are a little better than average in PE at 17.7. The average is 21.3. They're about average of price to sales. They're much worse than average in price to book at 35.3. The average is 7.0, probably because they have so much debt. They're doing fine in current ratio. They have the best ROE by far at 199%. The average is 36%, and they're dragging that average up. They're much worse in debt at 80%. Average is 55%. And they are the biggest company of the group, a little bigger than Boeing. And in terms of dividend yield, they pay almost the highest at 2.42%. The average is only 1%. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 16% premium, but their ratios look pretty good and their financials look awesome. The third and last company is Transdime Group. This company develops, distributes, and manufactures commercial and military aerospace components. Let's get started with the model. They have a market cap of $27 billion, so they're a large cap company. They're trading at $505 a share. Let's look at their financials. Their free cash flow looks really good. It's positive and growing. Their net income also looks pretty consistent and growing. Their revenue also looks really good. It grows each year and it had a big jump from 2018 to 2019. They have $17 billion of debt. They pay 5.1% interest on their debt. The cost of debt is 4%. And they're 100% debt because they have negative equity. When you have negative equity, that means your liabilities are greater than your assets. So the weighted average cost of capital is the cost of debt, 4%, and that's a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 14 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $16.4 billion. We divide that by 54 million shares, and we get a calculated stock price of 303. They're trading at 506, so they're trading at a 67% premium. It's a strong sell according to the model. Simply Wall Street is a little higher than me at 386, but they're also saying the stock is overvalued. Let's see where the stock has been trading at the past few years. Looks like the stock broke $600 but fell off a cliff. It's come back up a little bit. It could have room to grow, but I think it's settling at the right spot. Let's look at the financial ratios. They have a weak PE, that's stock price over earnings per share. I like to see below 15, they're at 30. Their price of sales isn't good either, that stock price over sales per share. I like to see below 2.5, they're at 5.2 and they have a negative price to book ratio since they have negative equity in that capital structure. They do have a good interest coverage ratio that's EBIT over interest expense. I like to see above 2.0, they're at 2.3. ROE you can't look at, that's net income over equity, they have negative equity. Equity is total assets minus total liabilities on your balance sheet. They have a high current ratio of 3.2, that's current assets over current liabilities. I like to see between 1.2 and 2. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to similar companies, I've done videos on Boeing, BWX Technology, CAE, Airbus, Firon Technology, General Dynamics, Huntington Ingalls, L3 Harris, Lockheed Martin, Ruger, Raytheon, and Spirit Aerosystems. Transdime is at the end. Now, if they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in green, they're better than the average. So they are worse in everything except current ratio. They're higher than average in current ratio. But you might say it's a bit too high. You don't need that much current assets on your balance sheet. If you have above two, it can be said you're operating inefficiently. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 67% premium. Their ratios are really weak. Although their financials look pretty good, just because the company has good financials doesn't mean the stock is a buy. This price of the stock might be so inflated, it needs to come down 50 to 75% just to be in line with intrinsic value. Let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Subscribe if you want to see me value more companies. And become a member and I could do a full video of the ticker of your choice. Thanks for watching.